Howdy! Today I'll go over our buffer overflow exploit. To begin, we'll cd into our working directory. Next, we will disable random address space so that we can do the first task easily. To do this, we simply type in su then root and then the root's password. This will give us access to the terminal as if we were root. Next, we will note that the kernel's address spacing is set to 2 before we begin this task. The 2 means that the kernel is set to enable stack along with heap randomization. Now let's set this to 0. We will use the following code to demonstrate how we can execute a shell code. We will compile this code. Here, we can see the permissions on this file. When we execute this code, we get a command prompt, and we can see what permissions we have when we run id. We can see here that the permissions match the call shellcode program. Now we will mess around with the permissions by changing the owner to root, and by making the program a setuid program. You'll notice the second time that we run the program, there is an s instead of an x in the third place. This means that it is setuid. Now we want to run some stuff as root. We will now look at a vulnerable code that we will be exploiting using a buffer overflow. We will compile this code with an executable stack and without stack protection. We will now change the permissions of the executable so that it is set UID. Notice that now the owner and group is root and we also have an S, meaning it is set UID. Now we will compile another stack program with the compiler flag turned on. We can see that this is not a set UID program and that it is owned by root. After looking at the stack program, we can see that it attempts to open a file named bad file. So we will create this file to see what it does. We will now run the GDB debugger to figure out where to start. Now we will set a breakpoint at the function BOF so that it stops when the program reaches it. We will now run the program. At this point, it is stopped at the BOF function. The variable called buffer is the buffer that we want to overflow. As we can see, here is the address. Now the top of the stack is the BP. Now we want to find the distance between the beginning of the buffer and the top of the stack. We can see here in this example that it is 32 bits. Now we'll remove the banned file. Let us quickly go over how a buffer overflow exploit works. To begin, our vulnerable stack program has a buffer that takes up 32 bytes. It will then read the previous frame pointer and then go to the return address, where it would normally go to the rest of the pre-written code. But we want to write more in the buffer than the 32 bytes that it is supposed to take up so that we can run arbitrary code. But we have to be careful because we don't want to run random code that may already be on the stack. So we want to fill it up with NOPs, or NOPs. That way, the return address we guess will fall somewhere in what is called a NOPs lead. We will then use the following program to exploit the bad file. So we will take the address of the buffer and add 296 bytes to it to get the return address that we want to go to. This should be well within the NOPs slide that we were writing into the stack. Now we will compile this exploit and run it. As we can see, bad file is not a set UID program. And here is the contents of bad file. Notice all of those 90s. Remember that the stack is a set UID program. As a reminder, stack will execute what is in the buffer. Because of the exploit with bad file, the program will run a shellcode. Because the program is a set UID program, it has root permission.